Every week I speak to some amazing people, but this week I've got my mate Matt Young back on the show talking about who needs instructions. It's an amazing discussion. We don't talk about LinkedIn. We talk about men's health, suicide rates, how men aren't talking, looking about our health, being men, having a touch for our female side. I love Matt. He's a brilliant guy and he's doing some amazing things for all the local men in the area. So without any further hesitation, we need to go and have a chat with Matt. But first of all, he chose the song Wages Day by Deacon Blue, which is such a great song. Here we go. Yes. That is a tune and a half, mate. Thank you so much for choosing that one. Well done for getting that high, mate. Well done. Ah, I've stood on a little box here. So tell me, first question I always ask my guests, why did you choose that song? Uh, It's all to do with the wages. Who needs a wage, eh? (laughs) (laughs) I think I've been self-employed since 1999. So that whole idea of getting a regular wage is something that's quite alien to me. And I love Deacon Blue, so why not? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So it's all about making money, though, isn't it? And that's the thing. So um, we do make a little bit of money being self-employed, but it's a totally different kettle of fish. Being self-employed then, Matt, what what does that mean to you? Uh, The very first word that came to my head just then was the word freedom. Um, I, I do like a bit of routine, but I'm happy to set my own routine as long as the work still gets done. But I do enjoy that sense of freedom. However, you know, in that time, I said since 99, been self-employed in, I, I had a, a, a job where I was a contractor and I had to be at a certain place at a certain time. So now fully self-employed, um, yeah, I, I kind of set my own hours, but you know, at the same time I have to deliver and I have to be there when I need to be there. So yeah, I mean, I might play golf occasionally during the week. Occasionally. Yeah. Um, but but that's, that's the beauty. It's all about that freedom. And I think I think that's something that you don't appreciate when you're employed mm. um, because it, you've got the nine to five. And like you say, when you were um, what were you doing when you were contracted? I was a radio presenter. Oh, my goodness. So morning or breakfast or, 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 or drive Bre- time? Yeah, breakfast. Oh, my goodness. So every single morning you had to be in the studio at stupid o'clock. So you had to get up even stupider o'clock, if that's a word. Yeah. OK. And so, yeah, even though you're a contractor, you, I guess you get a bit of freedom because you're finished by lunchtime, surely. I mean, around we, we'd be lucky if we got away by midday, one o'clock. But, um, yeah, we had been there since five in the morning. Yeah, that's crazy hours. That's crazy hours. You, you, you should bake cakes or something as well, because I'm, I believe bakers do the same sort of hours. Baker, I used to have a friend who was, he started work at midnight as a baker at Tesco. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's crackers. That's not good. That's not good for you. So you you got a real job now where you can work real hours and goodness says, so tell us a little bit about you and what you do. And and um, also, I need to know why you call yourself the journaling guy. You've got the 15 minute guy, and the journaling guy here today. Okay. Yeah, I know. We're all about guys here. Actually, yeah. that's that's really, there's a lovely segue. We, well, we, worked, we worked this out, didn't we? We must have sat and planned for hours. <laughs> that was beautiful. Uh, seamless. So the journaling guy came out of my other organization, which is called Who Needs Instructions? And basically, Who Needs Instructions is an organization that simply wants to get men talking more. Uh, men are a little bit, and I'm generalizing here because there's some men that are excellent at this, but men are generally a little bit more emotionally constipated than our female counterparts. And I feel that we should, we would be better off if we we're a little bit more open and honest uh, with each other, with our thoughts and feelings. So it, the, the journaling came from the position of if men do struggle uh, to talk to their men or their or their partner about what's going on inside their head, the first place they can start is by writing that stuff down. And that's where the journaling guy came came from, basically. Oh, perfect. And we did a show a while back um, where we talked about journaling. So uh, if anyone's got any questions about that, we'll answer them. But I want to concentrate more on who needs instructions because you're right. Blokes do not talk. They (laughs) bottle it. They bottle it all up. Um, And I'm sure you know the statistics, but there's a, there's a, a high number of suicides um for 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 men so come on spill the beans well uh ironically sunday was international men's day and they have a different theme every year and the theme this year was zero suicide now that is a bold claim but absolutely if we can get closer to that that would be phenomenal uh but those statistics are awful um 
unfortunately, men account for 75 percent of all suicides. So not that we it's, it's a competition. We don't want to bring it back to 50 50, but we just want to eradicate suicide all over. And it, it is my belief that by talking with each other, we'll find out that, you know, our fellow man is probably going through some very similar stuff to ourselves. And if you do that, you're you've got that brotherhood, that companionship and you've got that vulnerability which is a word that men dislike immensely um but it's something that i think has served me well throughout my life um and you know just being able to share those situations with a fellow man and realize that you're not in this alone other people do think the same way as you and that you know that's going to prevent you going to what i call crisis point and i i want to get to guys before they get to crisis point um I, i'm i consider myself very lucky that people reach out to me very often and it's either on behalf of somebody else or potentially and rarely on behalf of themselves but people do go look i've got this person in my life they're they're really struggling you know what can they do and that's brilliant that people come to me for that but i want to get to people before that i want to get to guys and make them realize that if we can talk we probably won't get to the point where we really do we're crying out for for help and support so that's the whole aim of it Mm. um matt you've you've touched a nerve there um emma bless you bless you um it's it's a tough one matt isn't it And, 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 and 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 but but this just shows that it's so so close i know emma she lives in the town um and i didn't know i didn't know bless you emma yeah, Emma. I mean, first of all, Emma, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, that's awful news. Uh, and and unfortunately, it, it's it it does go on. It's quite common. I, I had a situation this week where the least unlikely of per- people spoke to me and said they're in a bad place um, because we do hide it. We, as in men, we hide it. We mask it. We cover it up with other things, and we mustn't be judgmental about this because there's a lot of people that say, and I'm going to use a big word here that even I don't understand socioeconomic effects people. Now that basically is looking at, okay, well, the people that aren't as socially well off in this world are the people who are more likely Uh, in my experience, men in positions of, well, I was going to call them positions of power, but guys that are running successful companies are really struggling with this stuff as well. So, you know, it's not exclusive. But if if we can get guys to open up and make them realise um, that it's OK to talk and, and this is a genuine offer. If anybody is watching this at now or in the future, my email address, info at who needs instructions, my contact details are on the website. If you need someone to talk to, I will listen. Simple as that. Yeah. So if you're watching this uh, or you're watching it on playback, then you, there's some links and you'll be able to go into that. And if you're listening on the podcast, um, then there's a load of links at the bottom of the podcast. So, yeah, please reach out to Matt. And, yeah, he 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 will talk. He's a good guy. He's a good, good guy. Um, we always have the biggest hugs when we catch up, don't we, mate? Mate, and and I love that. You know that it, I'm. I've just literally come from a meeting with a, an organisation, a charity in Exeter, and we're looking at starting a dads group. Um, and you know, I think it's there's a generation, and I'll say there's a generation behind us, Ashley, that are a little bit better at that kind of stuff. Our generation is becoming better at it. But I talk about the dads in in particular because it's about bonding with your children. Now I. I'm very fortunate to still have my 87 year old father in my life. And that man has changed so much during his life. You know, imagine that, you know, this is a guy that was born in 1936, I think it was. So he's been through a war um, and he lived in London during that war. And I've been into the air raid shelter that he used to go to at the bottom of his garden as a kid. Wow. And that man still to this day, when I see him, gives me a massive kiss and hugs me and tells me that he loves me. Now, that's not the man that I knew when I was five, ten years old. He has definitely changed. And and for, for a man who's so stuck in his ways to be able to transition and now be really open and honest with me, tell me he loves me, kisses me every time he sees me. I mean, that's just beautiful. And it, I've had people go, oh, that's weird. You kiss your dad. Mate, I, I will carry on kissing my dad till we either of us is not no longer on this planet because that is a bond and i want to make sure that 
new dads and this is this group we're talking about starting that you're bonding with your children you know you're cuddling those children you're making sure that there is a an, an unscientific bond that you have by being with that you know that newborn child that is is so precious and children develop so quickly over their early years that it's it's vital that you get that bond in place really really soon i've gone off at a bit of a tangent but you know there's lots of things that men have to deal with and i want to try and tackle them all for some reason <laughs> and, and 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 that but 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 look this is the whole idea of of a podcast a live show and and, and to have a to have a little natter about this sort of thing i've uh, got I've got a few comments coming in um and and he's saying it's so good to hear this conversation um and um so and, and emma's saying she had few experience like that with her own parents and i think that that's the sad thing isn't it our parents because my, my father's a few years behind your dad but not far um so so we grew up in that generation where it was stiff upper lip um mm -hmm. boys aren't allowed to cry um and, and all that sort of thing and I, I think when i became a parent i sort of like i want to be more of a dad or more of a mum, I guess. I, 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 do, do you know what I mean? I, you, you know what I mean? Um, I know what I mean, but yeah. it's about being more of a mum. It is about yeah. being a parent. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. But I but I I I have got a very strong uh, uh I can't think of the word. I, I'm in touch with my female side. Um and 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 so so uh, you know and I'm, I've lived in a house with three women for the last 30 years. So you know I'm bound to be in touch with that part of of, of myself. And and so I love being a dad and I still cuddle my kids today and, and now my grandson's come along mm -hmm. and it's a totally different bond and it's great to see him with his dad and how they behave together. And, and I think that's what we need to do. So this dad's club, tell us a little bit more about this. Uh, it should be starting in early January. It's going to be in the Exeter area. Uh, I'm working with the brilliant charity Home Start. Um, who are phenomenal. They look after young families, uh, but they've even identified themselves that they, you know, they offer amazing support for young families, mostly mums, and they're lacking a little bit of dad support. So we're trying to work together on this. Um, we're going to run a fortnightly Thursday evening club um, where dads come together for maybe a little bit of a break from, you know, being a dad, but also to bond, to talk to the other dads and go, you know, oh God, they can share war stories. They can share nappy changing stories. They can share the good, the bad and the ugly. But we just want to create a safe space again for guys to come together, sit down, have a drink, uh, you know, water, coffee, tea, beer, whatever it is. But just have a bit of bonding time with other guys. And again, realize if you think it's a lonely time or your, you know, your your, per, your partner may be going through some post uh, postnatal depression, things like that. It's a it's a place to look for support, you know, and you'll meet another guy who potentially his partner's going through the same thing. And you can be there and support each other whilst also supporting your partner. So, yeah, it's just creating a, a safe space, which is a real kind of naff term, but I can't think of anything better to call it, that we can come together. And, and, and I'm going to be like the facilitator, the one who sort of sits there and tries to make sure that Johnny in the corner there is talking to Barry over there and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it, it's just got to lead to good things, hasn't it, really? Yeah, like like a, an agony uncle, aren't you? <laughs> I suppose so. Um, the, and, and just just on that point, yeah, I, I'm talking for Billy O, and you know I can talk, and I was a broadcaster. But one of the most important thing we can do as guys is when someone else is talking is to shut up and listen, because mm. we're. And, and I heard this from I heard this from a woman yesterday. When your partner, if if you have got a female partner and she's talking to you, she just wants you to listen she doesn't want you to find solutions she doesn't want you to fix that issue just be aware it's going on and i would say that is the majority of women and we as men tend to go right well if that's the problem here i'm going to try and fix that problem and i'll promise you 99 times out of 100 that doesn't need fixing they the, the, your partner wants to be heard so listen two of these one of these yeah absolutely sound advice i think as a man, our job is to fix things, <laughs> has isn't been. it? Isn't it? it? Has been, yes. Yeah. yes. And, and it's sort of like, right, okay, so you, you need a shelf putting up in the kitchen. I can fix that. I've got, I've, I've just hurt my knee on my bike, Dad. Get a plaster. I can fix it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's sort of like, no, just listen. I just, I don't want a solution. I just want to vent. I want to 
reach out, whatever. I've some great comments coming in. Thanks ever so much for this, um, Andy, getting involved with this. Uh, yeah, you know where I come from with three sisters. Um, it's very difficult to make friends as a male at some point. I don't know when it is, but it happens. Male loneliness is a big deal. And this is one of the questions I've, I've, I've got for you, Matt. Um, when you're at school, hmm. uh, you've got your mates and you run around with your shorts on playing football in the park or what have you. Um, but what about when you get older because you, you you go to work and and you know you might work remotely you might work in a different town or city you might have a, a huge commute how do guys get to catch up with other guys and he makes such a good point there 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 is something called the loneliness epidemic amongst men because we are a bit no we're a lot rubbish at keeping in touch we, we're not we're not great at it i've read a book recently by a, a great author he's called max dickens it's called billy no mates and it just basically comes from the he got to 33 years old asked his girlfriend to marry him she straight away went oh i've got all these bridesmaids and that sort of stuff and he didn't know who he was going to be his mess man because he didn't have a really close friend um so yeah it, it's really difficult like you say at school we bond as 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 a parent we tend to if we can mix with other parents because we we might see them at different organizations the kids clubs picking up from school if we get the the privilege to do that so you get that bond as we get older it becomes harder my advice is to be the sherpa do the heavy lifting reach out time and time again rarely will a guy not want to come out because he wants to be spiteful to you in other words you will get let down I get let down by my friends all the time. They're not doing it on purpose. You have to keep plugging away. Grow a bit of thick skin about the fellow went, yeah, yeah, we'll sort that coffee out. We'll have a beer soon. Keep plugging away. Keep asking. Uh, because the guy that kind of ignores you is probably the guy that needs it the most. So we have to grow a thicker skin. I, I've done this. My mates, have, some of them have been terrible. And it really, really peed me off at times. But I got over it because they're not, the way I got over it is they're not doing it on purpose. They're doing it just because we're lazy and we've, we're we busy. We, we work. We've got wives. We've got children. We've got partners. We've got whatever. There's lots of things that get in the way. And the decline of things like social meeting places, like public houses, like the clubs, maybe we did Boy Scouts or whatever, maybe we played football, cricket, rugby. Those things as we get older become harder to do. So we're in less social situations. So I, I implore you to, to try and find, if it's a book club, you know, something like that, try and find situation scenarios where we create those social, social situations because they're so, so important. So that would be like LinkedIn, LinkedIn local um, in Sidmouth uh, next uh, this 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 Thursday. Yeah. Now I would come if I wasn't at the conference in Manchester. Ashley, I'm sorry. Pat. Well, that that's a great lead in. So before we before we find out about the conference, if you are local to Sidmouth, uh, every fourth Thursday of every other month. So it's this month, not December, but we'll be back in January uh, at seven thirty a.m at the Balfour we meet up we have a little chat we catch up with men and women um it's it's a it's a it's a great little it's a great little session isn't it and and you finish armies are to die for they are aren't they but we're finished we're finished by nine so you mm. can get get to work and and there's no there's no regimes if you if you can't make it till eight and you've got to leave at Quarter, quarter, quarter to nine it really doesn't matter emma's coming so that's cool um so you're not coming because you're going to a conference what's this conference matt the conference is the Men and Boys Coalition Conference, um, which is in Manchester. Uh, I wasn't going to go because Manchester's a long way, and hotels. It's, yeah, it's, hotels it's, are it's miles for us, isn't it? Yeah, hotels are expensive, travels expensive, and then I thought a little bit laterally, and I was very cheeky, and I reached out to my male cousin who lives just outside of uh, Liverpool, and said. It's really cheeky. Can I come and stay for a couple of days? It'd be great to catch up, but I'm going to go to a conference in the middle. And you know what? He went, yeah, of course, it's fine. I'll, I'll, I'm going to buy them a Chinese takeaway on Thursday evening when I get back as a way of saying thank you. But yeah, the Men and Boys Coalition Conference is all about creating a plan around men's health. 
quite rightfully so, there is a plan for women's health. Government have realized, you know, that the women's bodies go through way more changes than men. So that plan is in place and it's beginning to work. There's so much more awareness about menopause than there ever has been, which is fantastic. For men, there's a health issue because a lot of us go, oh, I don't need to go to the doctor. See that little, oh, see that little mark there? Yep. It only, I only see it when I do LinkedIn and Zoom calls and stuff like that. And I didn't know what that was. And my partner said to me, Matt, can you go and get that checked out? I booked an appointment with the doctor. I sent them a photo. They said, come and see me. Luckily, it's just a, a skin discoloration from probably not wearing enough sun cream on my bald head. So, but I went, I went and got something about that done. I didn't just go, it will be okay. A lot of blokes do that. So we need to create this plan around men's health. It's going to go through government. We're lobbying them. And that's what this conference is all about. We need to get men to be a bit more proactive about looking after ourselves. So then if we want to be that manly man, we can look after the other people in our life as well. We've got to come first. Yeah, it's putting, putting on the uh, face mask in the aeroplane sort of scenario again, isn't it? What do you mean by that? So, oh, sorry. Yeah. So, when, 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 the oxygen, when the oxygen mask drops down, put it on yourself first. Don't don't help anybody else. Get yourself. When you said started. face mask, I thought you meant the thing that makes I can go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, your your brain is just brilliant. Um, if you're if you're listening on the podcast, Matt just pointed to a little red mark on his head. Um, uh, but it, yeah, that's the, that's the thing. We, we need to be told, don't we? You know, if it wasn't for your partner, you'd you would you'd be oblivious. I would be probably oblivious. yeah. I, I just say I only she sees it because she looks at me every day, poor woman. Uh, but I see it when I do Zoom calls, and I thought, what what is that? And I no idea. And like, listen, I, you know, it could have been something worse. It isn't, but at least I now know. Yeah, and talk, talking about mental health, I got a, I got a mate of mine who um, did the sample for uh, bowel cancer recently. Um, I don't know if you've had that test come through because you are of that age, mate. Um, I won't I won't say what you've got to do, but it, it, it's 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 the other end. Um, and they found something and he had to go in and then they found cancer. And I saw him last week. And uh, so I saw him uh, beginning of the summer and he was sort of like, oh, my goodness, you haven't heard the news. Oh, da, 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 da. But he was very upbeat, very positive. And uh, the story is go and get yourself checked you know when that when that sample thing comes through the post just do it because um he's he's um in, in remission he's he's had he's had the chemo uh right. he's right he's right as rain and, and when i saw him on i think it was last week last friday uh biggest smile in the world biggest smile in the world and 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 this is because he's all like right and you know when it came to me I, i've got to do it but so many people don't yeah, my, my chosen charity is one called the Chestnut Appeal. They're based in Plymouth and they are they care for men's cancers. Um, and one of those being prostate, of course, they've got a, they're actually opening up a brand new unit at Derriford Hospital on the 1st of December. I'm going to go down to the opening. Um, but, yeah, it's just getting men to, to just be aware if that rumble. I, I, I know so many people that have that have passed away and people who've had partners who passed away, not through ignorance. It's more through, well, I'll be OK, I, a soldier on. And then that stomach pain is not what you know you thought it was it was actually something something more serious you're not wasting the doctor's time they will not say that okay please just if there's a niggle go and get it sorted yeah absolutely absolutely um matt mm -hmm. we've just the time's just gone i know uh, what what haven't i asked you what else do you want to share uh i mean who needs instructions is my Community interest company, by that I mean it's a not-for-profit. It's there to get guys together. I run lots of different events from breakfasts. Uh, I've got some dinners coming up soon. We go walking. There's a night hike this Friday. Um, there are a few places left, but we've got a dozen guys already booked in. We're doing a little hike across Dartmoor. It'll end in a pub. The guy, we've got a professional guide who is phenomenal. He's going to tell us myths and legends from Dartmoor. He's, he's just a smashing smashing fella um all the the events i run are on eventbrite so if you just look for who needs instructions in the exeter area on eventbrite because it's just me at the moment and i can only cover extra the surrounding areas we're getting to plymouth we're getting to barnstable we're getting nationwide eventually which is why i'm going to a conference in manchester this week because i want to spread the word about what we're doing but yeah please get involved i have a membership as well membership gets you discounts it gets you in the whatsapp group it gets you uh, first choice of all the events some of the events are free if you're a member as well so if you want to get in touch info at who needs instructions.com is my email address 
all the details are on who needs instructions.com website. And um, if you just want to have a little chat, then clearly I'd be delighted to do that. No, absolutely fantastic. You got any webinars or anything online we can look at in, in the coming weeks, months? In, in terms of journaling, yes, um, I have a, a journal, a live journaling session coming up next Thursday lunchtime. Um, and I have a journaling course, which you can take at your own leisure via the Journaling Guy website as well. So those are the things that I have come up. If you're a member of Who Needs Instructions, we do two, two live Zoom calls a month as well. So you get to come on for half an hour. And again, it's just blokes. If they can't physically get out, we can get together on screen and they are literally a conversation. There's no agenda. I'm not going to ask you awkward questions. You don't have to open up, but you can just be there with a bunch of other blokes. We can tell jokes. I, I might play the odd game if the if the conversation's running a bit dry. It never does. But yeah, there are situations where I'm just trying to create conversations amongst men uh, and that seems to be working. I, I, I've had some lovely comments and, and, and people say, I'm so glad you're doing this and that's all I need. Although it would be nice to be able to pay the rent at the same time. Sure. So do you do talks and and, and speeches and things like that uh, commercially? Uh, I do, yeah. And I, I'm beginning to develop a, 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 a corporate side to this. Obviously, I look after men. The corporate side will be about looking after your workforce um, because that really is there to help me pay for the organization. I don't take any money out of this. I don't take a salary. I try and earn my money from the journaling side of things. Well, I say try. I do but I don't take money out of who needs instructions. Um, if it gets to the point where it's big enough where I can draw a salary from it, I absolutely will. But right now that's not realistic. But yeah, I gave a talk last week and I was approached by somebody afterwards. He's got a venue. So look out for some physical men's events getting together in the East Devon area in the not too foreseeable future. No, absolutely fantastic. Matt, it's always a pleasure. It is always an absolute pleasure. Uh, good luck at the um, conference. Uh, this week what are you what are you most looking forward to seeing at the conference uh, i'm really looking forward to seeing all of the talks because it is about create how do we create this men's health and how do we get it into government but you know again my beautiful lovely wonderful better half um she said to me the other day have you got a strategy are you going there with a reason and i was like you know i hadn't even thought about that she works in the corporate world which is why she's so complimentary to what i do so i'm now writing a strategy about right what do i want to get out of being at that conference because it is you know it's it's kind of two and a half days out of my working day and a lot of traveling it's still going to cost me some money and the ticket price and everything and the cost of a chinese dinner for my cousin and his wife of course <laughs> as my way of paying my lodgings but yeah so i need to make sure that i get something out of this and and it's going to be about taking some business cards along and making sure that people realize you know i this thing exists can i get some grant funding you know is there some money is there some sponsorship so all sorts of stuff i'll be looking for but but yeah just just watch this space i ain't going away anytime soon <laughs> no, I, I, I love i love what you do i love watching what what you do as well so absolutely superb uh, i'm just gonna uh, give a give a shout out to tom who's on next week um, he's uh, a creative coach for Creative Rebel. So looking forward to having a chat with him. And next week, I'm also doing my LinkedIn Daily Habit Workshop, which you've been on, Matt. Yes. Um, and uh, I've got a brand new platform. So it's a special launch price of just £100. There's still a few seats left if anyone wants to come on that. Um, Matt, I normally finish off with a question about um, advice to your 16-year-old self, but we've done that before. So how about what would you... Um, when you were when you were a young young kid at school, primary school, what were you thinking to do when you left school? At primary school, yes. <laughs> I know it's a long time ago to remember, but can you remember? I, I, I honestly, at that age, I don't know. Okay, stunt man. You wanted to be a stunt man. I wanted to be a stunt man. Is that because you had a little evil Knievel? I did have that evil Knievel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was awesome. That was that was a great toy. Uh, no 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 knuckles on your hand but what what great fun i ruined the hallway in my mum and dad's house the wooden hallway was ruined with evil can evil skid marks <laughs> fantastic absolutely fantastic matt on that note thank you very much indeed thank you to everybody for all your lovely lovely comments emma i will see you thursday and uh thanks very much indeed see you all next week all the best bye-bye thanks ash here we go another podcast in the bag 
I've been Ashley Leeds. You've been wonderful. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to hear more, then please subscribe and I will see you again another day. You can find me on LinkedIn if you want to catch up. If you fancy being a guest on one of my shows, I do live shows on LinkedIn twice a week, but I also plan to do some real podcasts uh, where we just do audio and probably record it to go on the YouTube channel. And we can talk about absolutely anything in those. So whatever you want to do, get in touch. And thank you for listening. You get out what you put in. Never gonna lose, never gonna win. Long as you're happy, you're always gonna grin. You get out what you put in. You get out what you put in. You get out.